Well, June 2nd marked the 100th anniversary of the landmark Indian Citizenship Act, which granted citizens to all native born non citizen indigenous people. Now, during its centennial, it's getting renewed attention with us to share more is celebrity historian Rafi Andonian. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Of course, thank you. And what I brought with me are these $1 coins that are out yes. now. And on the head side is Sacagawea. Now you might remember that for the past 10 plus years, Sacagawea has been on the head side of the $1 coin yes. for commemorating Native Americans. Right. But on the tail side, they change the U.S. Mint changes who is or the, what they commemorate on it each yeah. year. And this year for the 100th anniversary that you just mentioned, we have the Indian Citizenship Act on there. And the symbolism, if you take a close look at mm -hmm. it that you're seeing on your screen there, is the uh, eagle staff e for that is commonly an important symbol for right. American Indians and the US flag intersected together representing the dual citizenship that the Indian Citizenship Act Re, um, allowed in 1924, which is really cool. And yes. You're seeing an image there of Coolidge having the uh, uh, the Committee of 100 that came over, which is a group of both Native Americans and white po okay, folks yes. who in 1924 lobbied uh, President Coolidge, which then helped pass the Indian Citizenship right. Act that we're talking about. And the key thing that it did is that it no longer excluded people based on birth uh, for uh, becoming citizens from uh, who were Native American yes. descent. So for example, um, up until that point, what you had was uh, if you wanted to become a citizen as an American Indian person, okay. you had to give up tribal citizenship very commonly or tribal membership right. yes. and or give up communal properties to participate in a mm. private property component. Well, this act changed that. It said, no, you can be a dual citizen. You don't have to give up tribal membership. Right. And it's really important because in that lobbying photo that you saw, yes. Ruth Muskrat, who was one of the key figures that was leading that group, she argued for dual citizenship. She wanted to see both the, um, you know, the great parts of the civilizations of the past, as she put it, right. from the American Indian groups, and to participate in this new country that they love so much. And it was really important because mm -hmm. more than one third of native born American Indians mm -hmm. could not be citizens until this act. Wow. which enable them to do so by birthright yes. to be matching what other U.S. citizens already had by birthright by the 14th Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. And so that's the kind of impact that this, this, you know, this law had yes. and, and was the result of the precise things that we're talking about and commemorated today on the $1 coin with the most recent edition for this year. Absolutely. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you so Thank much you. for being with us this morning. Stick around or we'll be right back.